Yeah, it's now live, Dr. Zinaga. The superintendent of the Amani Union High School District, Dr. Zuniga. <laughs> All right, Dr. Morales, what a warm welcome. Uh, and thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have some participants coming in. We are uh, looking at the participant rate. So we're gonna give it a few seconds, folks. So please uh, be patient, uh, allow our families to come in as the numbers continue to move up. So uh, allow us to maybe about 30 seconds or a minute and then we can get started. We wanna respect your time as well. So we appreciate your patience. And just a couple of things that I'd like to review as we're waiting. Uh, this will be recorded for uh, posting on our district website in case you need to refer back to it or if you have a family member or a parent or someone that missed it, possible senior students that were not able to attend this evening, uh, we'd like to put it on our website for just a reference and also to assist our families. And um, the other thing too is that the presentation will be in two parts of uh, the English presentation, obviously, and then also translated into the Spanish, as you'll see the slides in the presentation. We are working on translating the others into Vietnamese as well as uh, traditional Chinese. And once we do that, we'll also post those all together. Okay. Uh, so that way everyone has the opportunity to review it if necessary in a different language. Uh, but that's what you'll see today. The uh, one side will be the English and then the other side will be the Spanish with the same information, just to help us expedite the actual presentation. Okay, so we're gonna get started now. It's a little bit after six o'clock at 6.02. Uh, our time with you this evening, we anticipate about an hour of, our, of your time that will be needed to go through these slides and also answer any of your questions that we, you may have that is uh, not, maybe not included in this presentation. Uh, I know there are a lot of good questions that we've been receiving at the school sites and also here at the district office too. Uh, first and foremost, I want to introduce my myself. My name is Dr. Edward Zuniga. I'm the proud superintendent of the Almani Union High School District, uh, also um, a product of our school district, a former graduate of Almani High School, and uh, really uh, also part of this community as I've, I've been here since my career and uh, very proud of all the work that we've been doing over the last couple of months under these conditions. As you know, it hasn't been easy for any of us, including families at home, including you and our senior students specifically. Um, dating back to last year, we thought the those class of 2022 had it tough with the three months that uh, we had them you know, outside the school setting the last three months of their school years, uh, high school careers. And knowing that we had an opportunity to bring back everyone in the fall, that never happened, never came to fruition because of the pandemic continued to increase. And with the understanding that this class of 2021 uh, may not see a day in instruction on campus. And that's something that we feel terribly about. Uh, and we do want to ensure that this graduation program uh, will be something to be, uh, to, to be uh, proud of, uh, to have memories to live by. Uh, no drive-through graduation. So we're very excited. That's why we're having this meeting here today. And this is the least we can do for our seniors is to provide them with a, an exciting a quality program under the safety conditions that we have to follow too. So you're gonna see a lot of that information out today. Uh, we have to, it's by protocol, and that way you're comfortable with what you hear and hopefully we can better understand what all of us have to do to have a successful graduation too, all right? Here with, uh, with me this evening, we have our assistant superintendent, Mrs. Robin Torres. She focuses on human resources uh, she's been uh, spearheading some of the safety protocols that you'll see on campuses and also some of the vaccinations that we've been coordinating the, at the district office here for our community too. And we also have our principals and some of the site administrators. We have from Royal High School, our principal, Mr. Gabriel Flores. We also have from El Monte High School, our principal, Mr. Eddie Cuevas. Uh, also from Fernando Arledesma High School, our principal, Mr. Freddy Arteaga, and from Mountain View High School, our principal, Mr. Jose Marquez, and from South Almonte High School, we also have Dr. Jorge Morales, principal there as well. And I believe Dr. Brisso will probably join us. He's the principal at Rosemead High School or uh, one of our other site administrators. 
we have lots of activities and after school programs going on as far as athletics. So I know there's some competition going on too. Um, so those, that's our team. And I do want to also recognize we have our auditoriums, uh, uh, auditoriums crew here, just representing the entire crew because uh, Mr. Ben Torres is with us and he's been working diligently with our sites to ensure that you know they're supported with all the nuts and bolts about uh, the stage and the lighting and the sound, all the good stuff, all the fun stuff we see at our programs too. So I wanna welcome Ben Torres, also our auditorium a technical specialist who will be with us this evening. Um, as you know, El Monte Union High School District has a proud tradition of doing ceremonies for graduation. I've been to several graduations in the past um, from, from having my, uh, seeing my nephews and nieces graduate from other school districts. And I can tell you that the quality of our graduation programs are above and beyond what I have seen in other programs too. So rest assured that we intend to do the same quality program as you would have seen in 2019 or even uh, before then. Uh, unfortunately, last year, as I mentioned to you, uh, we did our best to do the car parades to ensure that our graduates received their diploma and also our families were able to see them. And, and unfortunately with the class of 2020, uh, it never transpired into an actual graduation ceremony. Unlike this year, we will definitely move forward with that as well. All right, so we will now move forward into the next slide to uh, begin the presentation. I'll review the agenda with you briefly. We go to the next slide, please. Yeah, one more uh, one before that. I, I did wanna showcase uh, a little bit of uh, what has happened the last couple of years. If you go back one slide for me, Mr. Storage. All right, it's skipping through. Not sure if you're able to hold on to it. We'll, we could come back to that if you need to go to the next one. It looks like it's moving quick there. Well, this is what I wanted to showcase. I worked hard in putting this together uh, just to uh, capture some moments from 2018, 2019, the last formal graduation that we had. And, and just looking at the glimpse of what you see here on display from all of our schools, uh, you can tell the quality programs if you've never been to one of our graduations. Uh, as I mentioned to you, we're very proud of, of our stage crew, our, our auditorium production, our school staff putting this together. And every school has a tradition. Uh, we know that just by looking at these pictures, how everything's coordinated. And that's the exciting part that you're going to have your own uh, school with its own program. And also just the tradition that you may have seen at one school, particularly your school, that you won't see another school. So that's the fun part. OK. Uh, so just want to do, again, a warm welcome for everyone. Uh, bienvenidos a todos, and we hope that you enjoy the program. Okay, next. Okay, what the agenda will cover for tonight. Number one, the graduation dates for our schools. We also have what in-person graduation means uh, this year. Uh, that's a big question. What does it look like? What is it going to mean uh, for graduation? And then uh, the important stuff we, we have to discuss this is graduation protocols for the El Monte Union High School District and which will follow safety protocols provided by the County Department of Public, uh, Public uh, uh, Health Department. And we also have our own policies that we, we will embed as part of our program. The requirements for all graduates that will part, be participating in, in the ceremonies, as well as the expectations for all our participants. That includes you as parents, our spectators, or anyone that will be invited as the guests of our graduates too. Okay, uh, and then we will move on to some accommodations that we will be providing for our programs. Um, that's good news because some accommodations will actually, uh, uh, as, as a result of COVID guidelines that we're allowed to do and some that we're not allowed to do. So that's what we're doing both on, on both ends. And then last but not least, your questions and our responses to your questions that we will do our best to respond to, all right? Uh, a couple other things before we move on, as you know that some of, some of the individuals who are experienced with webinars, there's an opportunity to ask questions during this time on the chat. So if you have anything that you would like to ask or uh, wait until the end, it, it's okay too. We will be, we will do our best responding to the question that you are putting out, but I recommend that you hold off until we go through the whole entire uh, program. And then you could maybe put your question in there as well, because uh, we may have missed something that uh, you want to know about this evening too. 
So we can cover both as well. But if you have something that you don't want to forget, feel free to go ahead and put it in the chat box. Right underneath the actual screen, you'll see a little, um, right now it says an eight on there. That means that there's eight folks that are engaging in some type of conversation as well, okay? We also have the Q&A next to it on the left side. You could also uh, click on that. And if you have a question, you could also ask too. We're gonna be checking both of them as well. Um, we will respond either on the chat room or we will respond verbally at the end for a Q&A. Okay, deal? All right, we get to the next slide. So these are the key dates that if you have not heard when your graduation date will be for either yourself as senior or for your child, uh, we will start off our program on Wednesday. This is our smallest program. It's part of the adult transition program. These are for our students that continue their education between the ages of uh, 18 to 22. And they will be holding their program at their own site, which is the Adult Transition Center on Granada. Uh, the program is the morning, it's 10 a.m. as well. Followed by Thursday, June 3rd. This will be uh, a series of graduations happening at the same time from school, school site to school site. Uh, Royal High School will be home at uh, B.L. Bertram Stadium at the actual field there. Uh, El Monte will be at Lions Stadium at El Monte High School. Uh, Fernando Arla Desma will keep it at, on campus as well. Uh, there's, no, there's no stadium there, but they have a traditional uh, program on campus itself and it's beautiful campus inside uh, for its graduates. So that will start at 6 p.m. Mountview High School will be at Mountview High School at their Viking Stadium at 7 p.m. And then South Del Monte will be at South Del Monte at Eagle Stadium, also at 7 p.m. as well. Uh, these times are maybe subject to change, but uh, we feel comfortable that these are the times we will move forward with at this point. But nevertheless, I'm sure that if there's any uh, change that will come forward, it will, it will be soon and it will be provided to you by your school site administration. So keep those time slots in mind and locations. Uh, one unique thing this year that Rosemary will be doing is they'll be at Aurora High School uh, doing their graduation there at 7 p.m. on Friday. And the reason for that is that we are going through construction at Rosemary High School. They are renovating the field that includes the track and field to synthetic field. That means, uh, you know, uh, artificial turf. Uh, we're, we're excited about that, but unfortunately it's overlapping our graduation window. So they are working in partnership with the Royal High School administration, Dr. Bristol and Mr. Flores. So that way Rosemary gets a, a perfect um, setting as well. Uh, it'll be transformed into Rosemary. You'll never know it's at a Royal High School. I'm sure Dr. Bristol would do uh, and his staff would do a marvelous job in, in transforming that the next day uh, there too. And the good news also, there's a sufficient capacity to accommodate Rosemead High School folks too. So uh, unfortunately, yes, um, it's a bummer that we're going to not be at Rosemead High School that evening, uh, you know, on Friday evening, but definitely will be a program to remember. It'll be just like home, okay? Uh, so those are the dates that are set. Please put them on your counter if you have not heard. All right, next one, please. Okay, so lots of questions about what's going to look like, you know, what, what, what are we going to do, what's going to be different, what's going to be uh, the same from previous years. Um, as I mentioned to you earlier, we want all schools to have a successful program. We want all schools to return to the way they used to do graduation, and that's our intention. Uh, what's, what's limiting us is actually the rules, right? The county, the Department of Public Health says, you can't just have everyone come in traditionally just like you used to do it, and ex expect folks to be seated together. So those are the you know, rules that we'd have to follow as a district as well as other high schools within the LA County area too. But all schools will be permitted to hold an in-person graduation ceremony. There's no drive-throughs, there's no um, you know, streaming from afar. You have to see it at home like we had done last year. Uh, there will be restrictions that I mentioned to you and it will, it will be applied to all schools under the guidance of the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health. Right now, if you have been following the state system, there's four tiers and they're all by color, correct? We started off when we were deep into the pandemic, we were in the purple tier. And that's something that we, we had to, uh, you know, we couldn't even do really uh, in, go inside restaurants. We were very limited to what we could do uh, outside the school setting, inside the school campus as well. Um, luckily for us, we have improved. We have gone into the red a few months ago and now we recently entered the orange. Uh, 
Uh, all those are identified by the amount of cases within our community, meaning COVID cases that we have case rates for 100,000 people. So we've been tracking uh, down the county. Uh, we learned yesterday that the county is uh, qualified to now be uh, in the first stage of going into the yellow tier, which is the last tier, which is good news. But unfortunately, right now we're still in the orange. We have to meet uh, another goal next week to go into the yellow. So when you go into the yellow, that means you're you're able to do a few more things regarding such as graduation and other things uh, when you go out to restaurants, et cetera, okay? So it's looking good, but right now we have to address this as the orange tier with limitations that we have under the orange tier. And I'll explain that a little bit further. Um, graduates will also wear traditional cap and gown. Um, and also they're gonna do their, addition, their additional recognition. So if you are a gold cord recipient, you will have your gold cord and you'll wear it. If you are part of a club uh, or organization that has the stoles, that means the, the additional uh, memor memorabilia that you get to wear on top of your cap and gown, uh, schools are ready to do that. And it's exciting to see kids return to that as well. That includes you know, any type of recognition medals that the school uh, is handing out and also is awarded for folks who are for graduation. Um, every school is unique in that sense. So please uh, make sure that when there are school meetings that you follow that protocol, okay? Because schools will continue having their own policies about how they recognize their actual graduates on campus. And then the last area here is all events will take place outdoors and we'll have limited seating capacity. And I've already seen a question like, well, what is a limited seating capacity? We're gonna talk about that in a couple of seconds. All right, so next slide. This will continue with uh, in-person graduation as well. Uh, each high school will be provided with its own commencement program. And what I mean by program means what's the actual night gonna look like, right? Is, is, there, is, a, is it gonna have a program where you're gonna have special guests? They're gonna have a program where you know, the principal will be speaking or the ASB president will be speaking. That is what I mean by the program itself. In addition to that, we'll have a special setup, including a stage designed by the school, uh, the sound supported by our auditorium's, our auditorium staff, uh, decorations. Uh, you, If you've been to a graduation, you've probably seen flags waving around. You've probably seen, um, you know, perhaps maybe balloon marches. You've probably seen uh, large screen TVs, you know, decorative stuff on the walls, et cetera. And then also we will arrange seating for graduates as we always will, but this, will, this time will be a little different. We're gonna show you also in a few slides ahead. Uh, we estimate that the program will be about one hour. Um, this is slightly condensed because of our situation that we are limited as far as um, you know, the, the gatherings and things that we're not able to do. So we're estimating about maybe about an hour, either give or take it, go a little over or go a little under. So we're talking about an hour total program. Um, that's a good thing for some of you that, you know, you know you're know you sometimes used to seeing more than a uh, two hour program and it becomes lengthy. Uh, the good news for our graduates is they get to get on stage much faster on a one hour program too. So, you know, that's good news. Traditional marching and procession. That means that the way we have done things in the past when our graduates march in, right? It's a traditional setting for all of our schools to do that. And we're very proud of that. We wanna continue that. And also how they exit out perhaps, okay? Uh, how they enter, whether they enter together as a, you know, in, in pairs or they, they march on their own. That's all gonna be decided by the school sites. Uh, of course, we'll talk about you know, social distancing too because that's also gonna play a role there. Limited staff and student speakers and student performers. Uh, with the limited staff and student speakers and performers, we feel that that'll address the safety protocols to how many folks are using the actual microphone uh, and also caring for the sanitizing of equipment as we go through this. So we don't want delays in that aspect. So we're gonna do our best to try to limit the amount of folks that are speaking, uh, but also honor the, the folks that are speaking too, including our principal, and also uh, our student leaders, such as your senior class president or ASB president, the valedictorians, valedictorians that we know have spoken in the past too, okay? Uh, so we won't take away that, but it's probably just a, a more condensed speech itself. Our graduates will also receive our diploma. 
Uh, they're going to receive their diploma after the program. And that's, uh, don't get me wrong, we've always done that because number one, we don't want those diplomas to get lost in the middle of the night. Uh, so what we do is when on a, on a traditional program, we always have provided the actual cover itself. Okay, so when you see it on TV or in pictures and you see the, the cover of the diploma give, uh, being provided to a student, there's nothing in there. Uh, the students are required to pick it up either the next day or later that evening. And we'll go ahead and arrange that. Uh, we'll arrange that once again. So again, the, uh, the diploma did not get lost or damaged during the cer ceremony program. Okay, um, so that is uh, one thing that we'll definitely do. And then now we're gonna get into a few things about what the county permits us to do at this point. All right, so under the orange here, remember, keep that in mind, under the orange here. Uh, I'm sorry, actually, I wanted to show you a couple of things. So here's what we're looking at for a couple of model schools. And unfortunately, we're still designing some of the schools, but I do wanna share a few examples that our auditoriums uh, staff has put together. Uh, Mr. Ben Torres uh, and his team have put this together on the job. This is a visual of El Monte High School. And this is the way we envision that graduates will be seated. And if you look at the all the little centered uh, black dots, those are seats that will be uh, uh, arranged by name. And also you will see that there's some distancing between the seats. We are required to do at least six feet apart for our graduates for this uh, social distancing on the field or off the field. And that's what it'll look like at every school campus as well. Of course, the stage, you'll see that's the stage production you'll see. And then uh, it looks like Almani High School will be have two screens, large jumbo screens on each side as well. I don't know what the front looks like. It might be another screen in the middle or just might be a backdrop, decorated backdrop as well. Okay, uh, we'll have another example of being coming forward. This is an example of South Almani High School. This will differ if you look at the way Almani was planned out. It was um, more uh, from, from bleacher to bleacher. This one looks like it's gonna be facing the south, uh, the north end of campus with the backdrop on one side of the field at the uh, end zone. And then our graduates will be spread out uh, uh, between the probably, I would say starting in the 20 yard line all the way up to possibly past the 50, 50 yard line or even further down with social distancing across. Uh, there'll be roles uh, across for our graduates. Again, assigned seating and um, areas that will be spaced out as well. Okay, and I think we got one more example that we were able to complete before this presentation. Uh, this one will be at BL Berkstrom Stadium at a Royal High School for both a Royal and Rosemead. Most likely they will look at probably the same seating arrangement, uh, but obviously a different setup as well as far as the decorations and everything else. So you'll see uh, the, the jumbotrons are facing the audience from a side. And then this looks like it potentially will be looking at the north end of the field, if I'm not mistaken, facing the mountains. Uh, I think that's traditionally uh, been there at that stadium. But uh, these are two of our largest classes. So I'm anticipating that uh, almost entire field from one side of the bleachers to the other side of the bleachers will, will be aligned with graduates and chairs all together as well. Okay, so we're just providing you with visuals and just to kind of give you a glimpse of what uh, uh, you anticipate when you get there. All right, now I believe we're gonna get into the protocols from the county, the rules. This is the uh, stuff that we have to follow. So under the orange here, we are allowed to look at a capacity of 30% of the venue. Uh, this, is this is, although it's accurate with 33%, what they fail to tell you is that you couldn't have 33% of capacity, but you still have to keep people six feet apart. So when you are having assigned seating on a bleachers and you count six feet apart, that's what's going to matter. The venue could probably hold more, but at 33% capacity, but they're also going to regulate us to spread people out. So that means that um, with our size of our classes, we're gonna be very limited to the amount of uh, individuals per family members at this point, unfortunately. If we enter the actual uh, yellow tier, that's really good news for us. That almost increases the capacity by a lot. And um, we, we're not gonna get in too heavy into the yellow because it get, it's not guaranteed and I don't wanna uh, provide any false promises, uh, but if we are able to enter the yellow, uh, rest assured that we might see a few more um, guests that can participate in this venue, okay? 
uh, for, for, for right now, 32% or including the six feet apart, which will probably be a, a number, not an actual percent, but a number according to our seating arrangement. Uh, and we're gonna keep this fair. We're gonna try to keep it a fair across the board. So that way, um, you know, no matter the size of the campus that we're all treating everyone equally as far as the amount of PS per graduate. Pre-registration is required for all participants. If you're gonna uh, be allowed to participate, then you will you be required to uh, get into a link, enter it into your name. Each school we, uh, will be providing uh, the graduates to share that with their actual guests. Entry screening conducted for our participants. Anyone will, will be there that'll be there, including staff, including our graduates, including our guests, our spectators will uh, be required to do a screening conducted for all participants. Um, the, re the screen is the actual uh, the questions that are asked that uh, they, you may see signs posted that you're going to ask you know, yourself, uh, what is my response to these questions? So it does expedite the, the entrance faster, right? Or you also might see people asking you at the gate three following questions related to COVID conditions, all right? Have you been, have you been around anybody with COVID? You have COVID. Have you had stuff like that? Those are the general basic questions that are provided through the county part of screening protocols. We don't want people to come to the event if they're sick, if they have any type of, uh, you know, if they have, uh, you know, show signs like if they have the flu or they've been coughing, et cetera. Okay. We do not want folks to be uh, on campus if they are not feeling well. And that's part of our procedure. Uh, separate, uh, separate routes and also assigned entry exit for all participants. So before you get onto campus, you may be directed to uh, follow an entry uh, in a map and also we'll have maybe a different entry for different guests. That might be the case. Each school will be unique in a sense. And you also will be directed to exit a certain way as well. So what we want is kind of like a freeway, like you have a one-way area coming in, a one-way area exiting out. So that way there's no crossing and limiting the amount of people that are connecting together as well. Uh, we will have assigned seating, just like a concert or a ball game. So if you've ever been to a concert or a ball game, you have you already know where you're going to be seated at. You just can't sit like in the past where we show up and you know you get six, six, you know the tickets that you get, and then you go and you you know get there early because you want to get a good seat. That's not going to be the case. So we want you there before this, you know, obviously the start of the ceremony. But it doesn't matter uh, if you're there two hours before an hour. You're going to have this, a seat assigned to you. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, uh, another important rule is uh, no eating and drinking, uh, limiting the amount of, of food out there and open containers as far as drinking, et cetera. Um, we are not going to be able to provide that to anyone. Either you bring it in or uh, at any concession stand, no concession stand whatsoever. Also, um, no eating or drinking on the bleachers or uh, away from the bleachers as well. And then um, th these are kind of general things that the county asks us to do is provide uh, hand sanitizers. We'll have those hand sanitizers set up throughout the actual uh, area where folks are entering, throughout the uh, you know seating areas, as well as if anybody uh, forgets their mask. I know folks are used to bringing their mask everywhere now. Uh, we will have masks uh, upon request too. If you forget it at the gate, don't worry about it. We're gonna go ahead and provide that to you uh, as required to get into that stadium, okay? or into the uh, um, area that you'll be at, whether it's a small school setting or a large school setting as well. Dr. All Dr. right. Dr. Yes, sir. In the question, uh, Q and A and also in chats, uh, some of our attendees are requesting if maybe some of these items can be covered in Spanish a little bit, sir. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the, uh, so for those who, folks who uh, are inquiring about the Spanish one, and again, it's on everything that I'm covering uh, is on the right side. So, todo lo que estamos hablando hoy en, en esta presentación está en, en la presentación en español. Uh, yo sé si hay, hay preguntas en español. Vamos a, a dar la respuesta después de, en español o en, en el chat. Ok, so no se preocupen. Uh, todo lo que está escrito, yo estoy hablando de eso. Si estoy hablando de, de más lo que está escrito, uh, me voy a acordar que también en español si nos ayuda a nuestras familia también, ok. So, um, en ejemplo, uh, aquí en esta página estamos hablando de, de lo, las reglas del condado, ¿no? Los protocolos uh, del condado de Los Ángeles. 
y también la asistencia de estar uh, en, el, en el estadio o en el lugar, cualquier lugar, si es una escuela chica o vamos a estar afuera del estadio, es 33% de la capacidad de total del lugar. So, um, la cosa que le estaba explicando, uh, que, que estaba explicando es si um, esperamos que 33% es posiblemente más lo que esperamos, pero el problema es que seguimos con las reglas de, uh, de distancia social, ¿no? Son seis pies a cada familia, cada una a otra. So, eso va a reducir uh, más de 33% porque eso no se no dice aquí, pero también es parte de las reglas del condado que, que no se pueden sentar junto uh, con 30, 33% de la capacidad de, la, de, de todo lugar. Todavía la regla es también de de seis pies de cada, uh, cada familia de uno a otro en cuando se están sentando, ¿ok? Um, uh, I think, eh, y esto, lo, lo resto también estaba, eh, está, está listo, o está aquí en la página que estamos hablando también. Estaba hablando también que uh, no se permite uh, comer o beber uh, adentro uh, ni traer uh, bebidas. Si, por ejemplo, si se necesita por, uh, por necesita alguien estar enfermo o uh, uh, eh, no se siente bien, parte de las reglas es cuando entran, van a, uh, van a responder unas preguntas que ya están, van a estar disponibles a en, la entrada o posiblemente también les van a preguntar uh, las preguntas. Okay? ¿Se sienten bien hoy? Uh, eh, eh, no están con personas que haya, ha, ha, han tenido COVID o tienen COVID en la casa. So, esas son preguntas generales que uh, nos da uh, el condado para preguntar. También aquí en, 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 cada, en cada escuela, cuando una persona entra, la, 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 la misma situación, uh, le damos las preguntas antes que uh, podemos admitirlos en la escuela. Ok. Um, y también si posiblemente uh, si se le olvida la máscara porque también es parte del requisito uh, que para entrar uh, tenemos máscaras disponibles al momento si, si se olvida la máscara a ese tiempo. Ok. Uh, ok. Uh, una pregunta. We'll, we'll hold up for the question. Las preguntas que también en el chat room vamos a responder ahorita en el chat o después. Porque ya sé si muchas la misma pregunta después. Pues les prometo que unas preguntas uh, van a seguir en las próximas páginas. Okay, uh, I was saying that uh, we will respond to some of those questions that are being asked. They're going to be covered in a couple of slides that are coming up. So um, I ask for your patience. Uh, well, let's go on to the next slide and hopefully uh, this will cover some more responses to some of the questions that are coming up. Okay. And uh, Dr. Morales, si hay algo que se me olvidó, por favor, uh, alguien, uh, hágame el favor de responder. O gracias, doctor. persona de director, si quiere, ¿ok? Sí, gracias. Nomás también estamos respondiendo en, las, uh, en el chat o ya sea en el área de Q&A. Um, pero sí, para los que nos están acompañando en español, entendemos que la presentación está pues dominada en inglés, pero uh, esperando que el, la, el mismo contexto está en español escrito. También tengan fe que cada escuela tendrá su propia presentación tal vez en los días siguientes y ahí se les va a dar más detalles personalizados a su escuela personal, ¿ok? Gracias, and thank you. Thank you for your patience. Uh, moving on to the policies. These are El Mayo High District Graduation Policies o políticas de, de, de la degradación del de Distrito del Monte. Uh, each graduate will be limited to two guests. And I think that was the main question is, you know, what can we permit at this point? At this point, because of the social distancing and the limited capacity that we have, we want to be rest assured that two guests are guaranteed for our families to be in. And we're very grateful that we're able to do this in our own stadium with uh, actually having our two guests for our graduates. The, the two guests will be selected by the graduate or by the family, uh, but part of the county regulations is that they have to be from the immediate family the immediate household. We know that potentially that you have two households that families do share. So we understand that and we will work with the graduate on identifying those two. So whether it's a parent, uh, a guardian, or even a sibling, if it's a single parent, then they're welcome to do that as well. So unfortunately, we're not able to accommodate the ticket that we used to do in the past that 
obviously because of social distancing and that we are required to follow if we are going to be allowed to do this. Um, so right now, two guests, um, we will continue to monitor the county protocols. If it does change to yellow, uh, we may see uh, an opportunity to increase that, but I cannot guarantee you that because I don't, I, you know, I don't want to promise you that when I can't fulfill that. So for sure, for right now, we will guarantee two. Um, and if you heard for, if you have college graduates that are graduating this year, like my niece, um, no college graduations are happening as uh, far as the, the Cal State system. Uh, I think even the UCs. Uh, so that's unfortunate, but we will be able to provide an in-person with limited guests at this point, okay? Uh, the pre-registration will include name and guest and contact information. That includes phone number and email address that we'll need from you as well. Um, uh, as mentioned that each school will be provided or will provide the guest with a link to register as well, okay? Um, en español, poquito estaba hablando de uh, una, una pregunta es muy popular, es cuántas personas en, en cada, cada, cada persona que se va a graduar, estudiante, puede admitir o puede invitar. Ahorita, por las reglas del condado um, y por la capacidad del lugar del estadio, Uh, y también uh, so, uh, distancia social de las reglas, son dos invitados por cada uh, persona que se va a graduar, graduado, ¿ok? So, puede ser, por la regla del candado, alguien que vive en la casa o es de, uh, pa, son padres de familia o uh, son uh, hermanos, ¿ok? Y también sabemos que a veces son dos familias que viven separados, ¿no? Uh, el padre y madre. Eso está, está bien. Vamos a trabajar con nuestros estudiantes. Pero cada escuela va a dar su, uh, su parte de inscripción para que puedan poner su nombre y su información. Y la razón que ponemos, el, el, necesitamos el número de contacto y también el email para dar la información cuando llegan. Y también el condado uh, quiere saber ¿Quién está llegando? Si algo pasa, si algo, algo pasa que alguien uh, tiene COVID y ya necesitamos informar por ley las personas que estaban junto acerca de las personas que tenían COVID también. Okay, so eso es parte de las reglas que necesitamos uh, seguir también. Um, tickets will be provided to pre-register guests prior to the graduation ceremony. So it makes it easier. So once it's pre-registered, we'll provide those to your 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 grads or the graduate to make sure that those get to the actual uh, guests. I don't know if the schools are mailing out those to the home, but I doubt it. I think it's been traditional to hand deliver those to graduates and make them sign up that they receive them as well. Okay. Um, one of the things that we're going to ask as far as our policy that we continue to not allow obstructions for our other guests, that includes balloons. Uh, so anything that you can bring a bit large signs that are going to be out there, Um, if you bring it in, you may ask to, re, uh, to you know, return back to your car and to, be, to place them inside, okay? We know that's um, something that we'd like to see and, and celebrate, but also we know that it could potentially um, impair the vision of someone that's right next to you, in front of you or behind you as well, even with social distancing too, okay? Estaba hablando de uh, lo que no se va a permitir también los globos o otros ele uh, elementos que pueden obstruir la vista de otros Uh, otras personas que están junto de la, de la persona que trae los globos. So, si entra con los globos o está en línea, posiblemente uh, va a necesitar regresar a su coche a dejar los globos también adentro. Ok. Uh, al respecto de las otras personas, también eso es lo que esperamos. Y también uh, en, en pasado, también es parte de la regla de nuestro distrito también para las relaciones. Ok. Uh, field access will be restricted before and after program. This is very important for us uh, because we have to adhere to our policies. Uh, we have a, a, a county rule that you have to have 12 feet apart from our graduates to the stage and also 12 feet apart from anyone from our graduates too when they're seated. So we want to protect all of our graduates from our um, the spectators as far as the proximity, but also with the understanding that we're going to be very limited to what we can do for uh, pre and post recognition um, celebrations and gatherings. That's very unfortunate. That's one of the things that we're bummed about that we cannot um, do that as we used to do in the past. Uh, so it, it's gonna be very structured that you'll 
have to re remain yourself in your seats. Our graduates will have to remain themselves in their seats also even after the program and before the program that we're gonna remind you about uh, as guests. So we ask for your cooperation on, uh, cooperation on this to ensure that we have a successful and safe celebration for all, okay? Um, en español estaba diciendo que uh, es lástima que la, el parte de, la última parte de, no podemos tener acceso al campo uh, antes o después o, o, o durante la ceremonia uh, de donde están nuestros uh, graduados que van a estar uh, en, en el campo o en el sacate, ¿no? Okay. Es porque es parte de la regla del condado que no, no se permite juntarnos después de la graduación, de, de la ceremonia, uh, porque vamos a tener personas juntos de otras personas, grupos con otros grupos, y eso no se permite. Uh, lástima, pero uh, yo sé que si la ceremonia va a ser poquita más corta, posiblemente pueden tener su celebración después, afuera de la escuela, y uh, en casa, o en un restaurante, o posiblemente en, in, you know, con la familia afuera de, de la escuela, ¿no? Um, I was just saying that, you know, you could potentially plan for something since it's a shorter program this year um, to do something planned. You know, I'm sure that you'll be able to uh, celebrate outside the campus with your family, uh, whether it's at home or at a restaurant or maybe a facility that you're going to celebrate. So keep our fingers crossed that uh, that could happen for you. So I recommend that you start making those arrangements as well and keep that in mind too, out of respect for our safety and also a social distancing from other families too. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, expectations for graduates, well, expectivas para los graduados, no? Uh, for expectations, there are a couple of things that we need to be mindful as seniors. So seniors, if you're paying attention, these are some of the general things that you'll be asked to do, all school expectations that will require all of you to attend practices. Uh, traditionally, we have had at least two days, sometimes even up to three days that we're gonna ask you to come onto campus, prepare for the ceremony. We are a very traditional program for all schools. Um, you don't see that a lot of our high schools. Uh, sometimes you just show up that, you know, uh, uh, other high schools, you just show up and you get your camping gown and you're ready to go. Here, we're very structured. We have formal practices. We have uh, formal uh, seating arrangements. We'll do it over and over again to do runs because we want it to be a formal ceremony for our families. We owe it to them. We owe it to you to have that as a tradition here at El Monte Union High School District, okay? So you'll be asked to participate. And part of the participation is that you require to participate to get your graduation tickets too. I think that's probably been the norm and you'll probably see that as well. Uh, uh, and I'm sure other schools uh, within our school setting will have different, you know, what's gonna happen at, at those graduations. Sometimes it's a fun activity that you do as part of the graduation activity. Um, and we'll, we'll practice, but we'll make it, we'll make it well for everyone. Um, you'll be required to be there for a few hours, maybe not the entire day. Uh, we'll consider the safety protocols in, in mind. And we may even shorten those practices because of that situation that we're in. Uh, complete screening process for, uh, prior to ceremony. Uh, you'll be required every day, even at practices, when you check in to go through a screening process too, temperature checking, et cetera, uh, and also the questions that will be asked for you as well, okay? If you're not feeling well, don't come to practice. Also, unfortunately, if you're not gonna be feeling well that night of graduation, you cannot be there. So keep that in mind as well. Now keep your finger crossed, keep your fingers crossed that everything goes well for everyone. Uh, appropriate attire is expected, uh, cap and gown, and also school policies that will be followed. Um, generally, every school uh, is uh, wearing cap and gown. Uh, I know that some of the smaller schools sometimes don't have that, uh, our transition center program. Uh, I, I don't think that we do have that, but we ask that uh, our students come dressed appropriately as well if there are no cap and gown requirement for our smaller program, like our dental transition program. Um, school policy is important too, because every school has specific uh, policies about what can be worn in addition to the actual attire. And I know we've been very um, lenient the last couple of times as far as what happens, for example, on top of your cap and gown, right? I'm uh, sorry, on your cap. I know um, some of it is more an incentive about what you can do. And some schools are very formal about what can carry uh, a different color cap and gown for a different groups of students. You're gonna see that 
but also under the school policy, what can be worn on top of your cap and gown? You just can't put every, anything over it. It's gonna be have to be approved. So I would check with your school site about what you can wear on top of your cap and gown as well, besides what the school is already provided as well. Normally it's just what the school list is and that's it, okay? Uh, estamos hablando de uh, lo, que, lo que se va a uh, permitir para los graduados cuando uh, están vestidos de su toja y tu birrete, uh, de, de también uh, cosas adicionales como uh, se, se va a permitir uh, poner algo más a, a, arriba de lo que van a usar también para las escuelas que tienen sus propias reglas, ¿ok? O siguen las reglas de las escuelas, de la, cada escuela propia para saber más información, les van a dar qué se permite para también estar de acuerdo ese, ese día para los estudiantes o los que se van a graduar. Uh, social distancing and wearing a face coverings as well. Um, this is a standard, we've seen this, so we expect this for all, even under the orange here that we're gonna expect every student to uh, comply with social distancing and wearing a face covering. We know we haven't seen each other for quite some time. We know we're gonna be excited that night but uh, there would be that expectation then uh, just uh, maybe apologies in advance that you may be directed to if, if you're not complying uh, that you have to remain social distance and also wearing a face mask too. And we don't want to send anybody home that night. We really don't. Uh, we're going to do our best to make sure that you enjoy it, uh, but also others can enjoy with safety in mind as well. Okay. También las reglas que estamos hablando uh, de distanciamiento social y también uh, cubierta de, uh, de la cara uh, faciales que se necesita uh, todo, uh, toda la noche to cuando estamos aquí en, en la ceremonia durante el tiempo de la ceremonia y sabemos que va a ser difícil para los estudi estudiantes que no, no se han mirado de, de principio de cuando comenzamos la escuela no, no están en la escuela so, Vamos a hacer todo lo posible de, a, 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 para acordar, a, acordar cada uno que se necesita seguir las reglas para, a, para estar a, en un lugar que se sienten bien todos también y que están bien con su salud, ¿verdad? So, so we refrain, refrain from yelling or screaming at all times too. Um, it may sound silly. Uh, how do you control you know, the excitement that you're there for graduation? But we under, also understand that you're going to be wear, wearing that actual facial cover, but potentially you can be so excited that lose that you know facial cover and scream and yell, and then that's what we see the actual droplets you know carry from one person to another, and we don't want that. So please do your best as graduates to refrain from yelling or screaming at all times. Okay, uh, and then last, remain in assigned seats. Um, we're not going to be allowed to walk around. To go say hi to your friend and come back, please keep that in mind and respect other graduates because also that's uh, again keeping safety in mind as well. Okay, um, we're going to go on to the next one for the for expectations or protocols and uh, expectation for our guests. So the majority of uh, participants here, I'm assuming, there are parents and also our guardians and family members that from the needed household. So if you uh, are going to be able to attend and you are selected as a guest that are attending for your graduate. We expect you to have your ticket ready upon entering. Uh, pl please do not forget it. It's going to be very difficult for us to uh, monitor that if you forget it. And you may, you may be allowed after everyone goes in, but we'll have to verify that if you forget your ticket or you lose your ticket too. That's why it's important that whatever that ticket is assigned to, that person's name is there too. So that way you, you expect that, you know, that, that, that is you and that we can provide you that ticket as well. If you're not on there and you lose your ticket, also going to be a challenge for us to give you entry access into the facility. Uh, Está listo para presentar su boleto antes de llegar. Uh, cuando uh, se va a pedir, cuando estén en línea, que tengan su boleto antes que, que lleguen a la escuela. Okay, si posiblemente si se, se lo olvida o si perdieron su, uh, su ticket, uh, es posible que se va a tener que esperar a, al fin cuando todos ya, ya, ya entran y también estamos de acuerdo que el nombre que está registrado a la persona que le dio el, bol el boleto es, está presente con su ID. Okay? 
So, uh, si es otra persona y no está el nombre registrado, no vamos a permitir que entren. La, que entren. Okay, so es muy importante. Uh, follow screening protocols upon entry. Uh, please make sure that you follow the screening protocols upon entry. I already reviewed that. That's the same question you're going to be asked. And also perhaps uh, in some cases, you know, the uh, auto temperature taking as well. Maintain social distance and wear face coverings. Uh, we already discussed it with the graduates to maintain social distancing and wear face covering. I, I, I can't tell you enough, and I think you've already heard that wherever you go. So we expect the same thing as part of our expectation for you as guests. Uh, remain in assigned seats with the exception of using restroom. Um, we know that there's going to be an opportunity for, for you to be able to use our facilities like restrooms that, you know, it's urgent. Feel free to do that. Yes, we expect you to do that. They'll be sanitized. They'll be clean. Um, but other than that, we're going to ask you to remain in your assigned seating, okay? Se va a permanecer en los asientos asignados con cada persona o cada familia, pero también con la sección de usar el baño, se va a permitir ir al baño y regresar, pero también seguir en su lugar, okay? Que va donde se va a sentar usted como persona que tiene el número del lugar donde está uh, a este momento, ok? Uh, y también uh, acuérdense que los baños van a, se van a limpiar por las reglas de nuestro, nuestro distrito a uh, cada hora para estar uh, aseguro, asegúrense que va a ser un baño limpio uh, también. Uh, no yelling, shouting, or screaming. This clapping is encouraged as well. Same thing for guests. I know we get excited when our child's name is read. Please be mindful that you have other people that are around you also that will need to refrain themselves as well as you. Uh, we encourage clapping. Uh, we want you to you know, enjoy it and, and clap, but because of the droplets and the matter with the, even with the face mask, uh, we wanna be careful about the yelling and screaming as well, okay? Can we control it? We can control it to a certain extent. Again, we don't want to dismiss anybody from leaving. If, if it continues, uh, we'll do our best to remind you and also to make sure that you are following our protocols too. Uh, acuérdense para uh, como, como los que se van a graduar, so no se va a permitir uh, gritar. Uh, uh, se, uh, por favor, uh, si una cosa que pueden ser uh, aplaudir, ahí eso no, se, no es nada de gritar, de usar la boca, ¿verdad? Para, uh, para estar seguro que mantenemos nuestra salud y también otras personas que están cerca, acerca de nosotros también. Sabemos que se, se va a cubrir uh, también, pero de todas maneras, uh, esperamos que todos uh, se, siguen nuestras reglas y um, también nos vamos a you know, dar acuerdo también a ese momento uh, para hablar con ustedes y siguen el problema. No queremos que, que una persona uh, puede, um, puede, puede ponerse en una situación que no puede permitir estar ahí porque no, no siguen las reglas. Ok, so no queremos eso. Uh, refrain, refrain from eating and drinking. We discussed that earlier, just like our general protocols in county. Uh, unfortunately, this is a, a ceremony that has specific regulations and we do not uh, feel this is an ideal uh, ceremony to allow eating and drinking, especially when open, there, the, the food's gonna be left and spread out as well. Uh, refrain from also entering areas where the graduates are located. We talked about that. Um, please do not enter the areas where our uh, graduates are going to be at, at no time during the ceremony before or after. Okay. Uh, como, como digo, uh, hacerse en ese de ingresar a la zona donde se encuentran los graduados. Ya hablamos de eso, pero uh, eso es lo que esperamos para nuestros, uh, nuestros padres o los que van a estar uh, con, con la familia. Okay. Uh, enter and exit at all assigned locations, uh, in, uh, assigned locations, I'm sorry, at all times. And then our last point, our uh, último, follow all instructions by school staff as well, okay? So there'll be plenty of school staff. Vamos a tener uh, personas de nuestras escuelas trabajando esa noche para que no nomás uh, nos ayude, ayuden a controlar las personas de donde, donde, van a, donde, van a, donde se van a sentar, Si tienen preguntas, también uh, uh, si, uh, um, si se salen de un lugar para uh, saber que dónde están. So, vamos a tener muchas personas que nos van a, vamos a ayudar, van, van a ayudar a nosotros 
para el programa. Okay. All right. Uh, next slide. La página que sigue. Okay. I talked about accommodation that are part of our agenda. The good news. Uh, parte del de, de programa vamos a, a hablar lo que se va también incluir del programa. Streaming, recording of commencement ceremony. Okay. We are going to provide the service to all school and all programs for our family members that cannot be there because of our limited amount of capacity that we're allowed at this point that we will be uh, allowing. So we will do a live program from start to finish for all folks that are at home watching the actual graduation. So we're happy that we can provide the service to everyone. And we know that this is important to ensure that uh, folks are, get a chance to see whether they're in person or at home watching it too. The least we can do with the restrictions that we're, you know, we're, we're not, you know, and we're not able to have more folks on campus, but also something that you're able to enjoy from home as well. Um, photos of graduates will be available for purchase. Uh, this will include um, companies that have contracted with the schools that will pro be providing this close-up picture. They're beautiful pictures. Um, they will be shared as, uh, you know, for the families to consider if they want to purchase them. Uh, and also uh, the graduates that they would like to see their picture too. Just to make sure that, you know, they get a chance to do that. Okay, so that's going to be available as always. This is a traditional thing that we do offer as an additional service, but not required. You don't have to purchase it. Uh, but we'll do our best to make sure that, you know, those are available to you as well, okay? So, las fotos van a estar disponibles para la, para la compra. Y como les digo que es una compañía que viene uh, y es opción para la familia si quiere uh, la foto o si no, uh, no, no necesita comprarla. Okay? A reserve seating for disabled guests. Uh, we've always allowed this. We, we know that uh, some of our families are not able to be on the bleachers because they are disabled and they have a difficult time they're doing that, we'll have the range seating as we have done in the past. Okay. Uh, asientos reservados para you know, personas que necesitan, que no pueden estar uh, en arriba donde está el estadio para sentarse, uh, posiblemente vamos a estar a, a, abajo. Eso se va a arreglar antes. So, tienen alguien que posiblemente necesita ese servicio, por favor, hablen con el director, la directora o sus directoras to directors in the school, okay? Como cada año, eso lo que hacemos, lo que hacemos cada año, el servicio para los, nuestra familia. Uh, fully vaccinated only seating sections. Uh, separate seating area. And then this is good. This is something that part of the orange here that we are going to honor. So um, this is almost like a incentive, right? Uh, like a reward for those of you who have already been vaccinated uh, that can do this. Uh, potentially, you will see yourself closer to the graduates if you are fully vaccinated. Uh, obviously, if, they're, if we're able to accommodate everyone that's fully vaccinated for only seating sections, that means that you do not have to do the social distancing, allowing folks to get closer. Uh, uh, and also, uh, the only requirement that we ask for the county is that you have your face covering at all times, too. And then proof of full vaccination is required. So we all have our little cards that we have. You know, the show proof that we've been that we've done done that. If we lost our little card, we know that we can get a copy of it. I think there's a, a county website that allows for that. So um, something that you're going to have to provide uh, so that we, we can accommodate you as a vaccinating only seating as well. And um, if you follow professional sports, I think you've seen that some of the even sports like the Dodger games are going to start doing that as well. So we're allowed to do that. So if we're allowed to do that, we're going to do it as well. Uh, estaba hablando de la, la última parte de aquí de esta página que vamos a tener un, uh, secciones de, de, de asientos solo para las personas que ya están vacunadas o vacunados. Ok, tienen que uh, van a estar en una área separada de donde están la, uh, los asientos generales que están separados familia a otra familia. Aquí uh, no se necesita separar cada, fa cada familia, pero se va a necesitar uh, cubrir uh, faciales también. Uh, eso se, se, se necesita seguir todavía. Ok. So, es buena noticia que el condado permite eso uh, en el que se llama uh, el tier naranjo o el color que estamos ahorita por el condado. Y ojalá con, si 
si entramos en otro color, el último es el amarillo, posiblemente podemos uh, admitir uh, por aquí, poquito más personas, pero ahorita no, lo, no podemos pro, uh, prometer eso porque ahorita no estamos ahí uh, en, el, en ese pie o uh, el color uh, amarillo. Okay. All right. And I believe that might be our last slide here. And I know it's one hour now, but I think this takes us to our Q&A session here. So we have a couple of folks that have been helping with monitoring, including our principals and our uh, assistant superintendent. Uh, here's an option to do Q&A on general questions that have been asked. Um, the, and if we run out of time because it gets late, we promise that we will answer all the questions and provide that on our website. Uh, ya se terminó la presentación de lo que la información que, que estaba que cubrimos hoy. Ahora es el tiempo para uh, mirar las preguntas y también dar las respuestas. Y tenemos los, nuestros directores aquí con nosotros esta noche que nos van, nos van a ayudar. O si ya dan la respuesta, la respuesta está en el chat o, o donde está el QA. Um, y también uh, nuestra asistente, uh, asistente de superintendente de, de uh, la señora Torres también aquí está para dar, darnos uh, nuestra ayuda para esa es, uh, es lugar aquí en Q&A session, okay? Um, so why don't we do maybe a couple of key questions if anybody wants to chime in, some of our panelists uh, that can uh, jump in and that'll definitely help me out because I know you've been monitoring the, ch the chat room as well. Is there anything that we have not answered? Hay una pregunta que la respuesta no, no ha llegado a este momento, at this time. So either uh, one of our principals or Mr. Torres, una pregunta en español que se siguió preguntando fue uh, el límite de, uh, de, de boletos. Uh, se, se compartió que va a haber límite de dos boletos por graduado, correcto? Y, uh, y también si hay cambio en los colores del condado, uh, si tal vez había consideración de uno más para una familia. Sí. Si posiblemente cambiamos al color de amarillo, es el último, como les dije, del condado, del estado tiene cuatro colores, ¿no? Y el último, en, en lo que queremos estar es en el amarillo. Eso se va a permitir más personas, un por ciento de personas en el estadio o en un lugar donde, donde vamos a tener la ceremonia. Y resulta que posiblemente podemos incluir más personas en el programa, ¿no? Ok, y ojalá mente, si todo, todo sale bien, eh, vamos a esperar otra semana para saber si es, es posible o si no es posible. Pero esperamos que cada escuela y también o, otro, otra información que se va a mandar por el distrito, posiblemente por correo electrónico o por mensaje, que uh, vamos a dar la noticia si es buena noticia o si vamos a seguir con el mismo las mismas reglas, ¿no? Dos, dos personas para cada uh, uh, estudiante. Okay. Y por último, doctor Zúñiga, en español, técnicamente, la, 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 para las familias que, uh, pues, la presentación fue en inglés por mayor parte, pero cada escuela va a estar trabajando ya después de esta junta con todas nuestras familias más uh, directamente. So, manténganse al tanto, más información viene Uh, aunque haya cambios, se les va a dar la información para celebrar el 3 de, el 3 de junio uh, en la mayor parte de las escuelas. So thank you, Dr. Zunir. That, that's it. Sure. Um, we know that we're very limited to two guests. Uh, this, this also includes everyone. So we are not allowed to uh, have additional uh, guests. So that includes children. So I, I, I need you to plan accordingly. I need you to make sure that you know, you understand what we're, we're going to require to do as an as entire school community, right? So unfortunately, you know, that's something that you might have to plan for, whether it's uh, someone to arrange for babysitting or someone that, you know, can help you out during this time. Uh, but uh, as Dr. Morales had mentioned in Spanish, that if we have good news with the yellow, it might allow us to have more people. Okay, uh, esperamos que uh, si entramos en el color amarillo, Posiblemente podemos incluir más personas. Una pregunta que, que miré es, so, ¿los tiquetes se incluye un, uh, 
um, un adolescente, un, un niño más chico que se puede cargar, no se va a permitir otra persona, también niños. So, so, dos personas son dos personas a, a este momento y esperamos que todos pueden seguir las reglas para que uh, podamos seguir adelante. Aunque okay, yo sé que es muy difícil a veces para, para, para padres de familia para mantener, cuida, uh, cuidar a los niños. So, espero que ahorita plan, que dan un plan para la, para la familia si necesitan a alguien para you know, cuidar a sus niños también. Okay. Ojalá que si podemos incluir más personas, es parte de incluir más personas, es parte de la ceremonia. Okay. ¿Algo más, uh, Dr. Morales? ¿Anything else from anyone? Dr. Zuniga, there are several questions about um, Rosemead High School uh, doing the graduation at Arroyo High School and the, the rivalry and why that's happening. That's an excellent question. As I mentioned to you that, uh, or maybe some of you guys have missed it, Rosemead High School it has no access to a field right now at home. It's under construction, so there, we're not even permitted to enter the field or the bleacher section to have a ceremony. Uh, we're not permitted to utilize indoor facilities like the auditorium. So we cannot have an auditorium program. If we do something indoor, it would be very, very limited amount of people that you can even permit indoor at this point, including uh, safety checks like testing for all the individuals. Um, and whether it's a Royal High School or another stadium, we feel that having a, sta a location that provides a, a seating that can uh, meet the needs of Rosemead High School. Uh, it, it's probably the largest stadium that we see. Um, I know the rivalry, I get it. I, I know that it's important for kids too. Um, and Rosemead High School definitely will be visible all over the campus at the stadium at a Royal High School. Um, I had just a story myself, I just want to share it. But when I was a kid uh, going, uh, attending at Monta High School, we didn't have a field. We didn't have a, a field to graduate on or uh, play sports in when it came to football uh, under the lights. So our home field was Berks, BL Berkshire Stadium. Uh, and basically that stadium is the district stadium uh, before it even became you know, the actual uh, home of a Royal now because everyone, everyone has a stadium now. So that was the stadium that we called our home stadium as well. Um, but we understand uh, we're sensitive to that. Uh, we know that uh, the Rosemead High School administration and staff will do their best to ensure that Rosemead High School definitely is transformed. Okay, I hope I answered it and hopefully um, Dr. Bristol in his special meeting that we'll have with uh, his students and parents will allow that uh, conversation to continue. Dr. Zuniga, if it's any, this is Mr. Flores, if it's any consolation, we'll be at a, we'll be at Rosemead High School in about a year or so. That's right. <laughs> we'll be, we'll be uh, graduating on their site. So it's part of the, the, uh, the process in, in getting beautiful new fields. Yeah, a Royal High School will be under construction next graduation year for class of 2022. And those of you guys who have little brothers and sisters or next year's class, uh, that's going to be required as well. Uh, again, uh, two of the largest schools sharing the stadium. So we're a family all over. We know that it's a robbery, folks, but uh, we're doing our best as well to make sure that everyone gets a graduation ceremony. Okay, our panel, anyone else, uh, anything else that I can assist with at this point? I think the panel's done a really good job of answering them in the chat and Q&A. Um, there might be a few that we can answer on the website after this. Okay, Dr. Morales in Espanol, you wanna uh, maybe just recap on that? What, we, what we've been doing on in the chat room? Sí, disculpe, Dr. Zuniga. Um, sí, una de las preguntas ahorita que se cubrió en inglés es uh, la situación entre los estudiantes de Rosemead High School Actualmente esos estudiantes uh, tienen su campo que está bajo construcción, so no está disponible para una ceremonia como esta. Uh, así que la, el distrito y la escuela están, uh, tus planes son de, de, de tener su celebración en la escuela de Royal High School, tal vez un rival, pero uh, algo es mejor que, que nada por el momento. Si se entiende tal vez uh, la inconveniencia, pero es para celebrar la clase del 2021. Ay, también el director de uh, Royal High School indica que uh, en unos años también ellos van a estar en la misma situación porque uh, cuando el campo de, de Rosemead High School esté lindo y chulo y bonito, 
Um, el campo de Arroyo va a estar bajo construcción, so van a tener que ir a ese nuevo uh, lugar para tener su ceremonia también en unos años. So, that's pretty much it, Dr. Zuniga. All the chat is, is all the questions were, were pretty much either answered by, by reply okay. or in your presentation. Okay. All right, folks, uh, we will post this presentation on the internet. I know uh, there was a question about the college, I mean, the required credits for graduation this year. One good thing, good deed from our board of trustees, and we want to thank them for supporting our seniors that are in the bubble. You're only required this year 190 credits. Of course, there's specific requirements for subject matter courses, but 190 credits for this class only at this time, okay? Um, so hopefully those who are in the bubble work hard, finish strong, and get you graduated so you can celebrate with everyone else, okay? Uh, al fin, ya terminamos nuestra presentación. Uh, una, una pregunta que, que tuvo que a lo mejor ya, ya, respond, ya respondieron que este año uh, la mesa directiva uh, dio permiso de, de los requisitos de, do, de 220 eh, uh, los años pasados de, para graduarse créditos a 190 este año. So, los que están acerca de, ciento, de, do, de 190 uh, van a tener este año la oportunidad de graduarse con 190 créditos por, por la pandemia, por los problemas que uh, nuestros estudiantes han tuvieron en casa en de, 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 uh, aprendizaje de distancia, larga distancia. Okay. Entonces, es buena noticia y ojalá mente que si todos sal, sal, salen bien, que siguen adelante, que terminen uh, con ánimo y con fuerza y ojalá que se, todos se van a graduar a tiempo. Okay. Uh, on behalf of the El Mani High School District, on behalf of all of our schools, our principals, and everyone as part of our district family, we thank you for your time, uh, for your great questions, and we will continue to inform uh, you as a community as you prepare for graduation this year. So we hope that uh, this was helpful and that we appreciate your time too in this challenging time. So thank you, have a good evening, and we will see you soon.